Hello Gooners and Europhiles because this is the loose cannon number 28. That's the number of Kieran Gibbs, just in case you're wondering. Sorry, I forgot to mention Jovino last time in number 27. And of course, it's the Euro 2012 blog. And there's been an awful lot happening. A couple of games today. Um, are we still today? Oh, it's gone midnight, so perhaps not. Or just about to go midnight. Recording late, aren't I? Well, it is a Saturday night, so I'm allowed to do these things. Yes, I think my parents might let me stay up this late on this particular occasion. Because I've got all this Arsenal news to bring you. To be honest, I haven't got an awful lot of Arsenal news, but what I have got, I will share with you. Having scrolled the internet um, and trawled and done whatever else you do when you're surfing surfing the web. Johan Juru um, looks likely to leave, apparently. This uh, story is coming from Football Talk, but it's been run on a number of websites. Um, according to the player's agent, that is, uh, the player is going to be leaving. His agent is Flavio or Flavio Ferreira. And he, he, apparently, originally, this story came from Sky Sports News. And uh, apparently, the agent is in Italy to meet up with potential suitors. And one of those suitors is Napoli. And this is the quote, which I quite like. Can Giroud join Napoli? It's certainly possible. He might, you know, maybe you'd say the same about me. You know, you know what some agents are like. Silver-tongued and that. It's certainly possible, especially as we will be in Italy next week for a series of appointments. What sort of appointments is he talking about? I mean, we've had all this before with Alex Sleb and his uh, ice creams. And of course he didn't end up in Italy after all of, all of that. He ended up in Spain and a lot of good that did him too. Anyway, he said, at the moment Napoli are not on the list of appointments, but everything is possible. If he leaves the Premier League, then he will play in Italy or Spain. I saw my client the other day and he was enthusiastic about both Napoli and Italy in general. So far, we have received an offer worth 10 million euros, but it is up for negotiation. He wants to play for one of the top five Italian clubs. Well, that's what uh, Ferreria... Is it Ferreria or Ferrer... I don't know how you pronounce it. Ferreria. Let's get it right. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's what he's telling Sky Sports. So, looks like it could be history. he could be history, Johan Juru, which is a great shame, because I still feel... We've not really seen the best of him. He was a promising youngster, but now, of course, he's 25. He needs regular first-team football, and the chances are he's not going to get it at Arsenal. So you can't blame him for looking further afield, but I'll be surprised if he goes to Napoli, but stranger things have happened in football, let's say. Well, meanwhile, Robin Van Persie, of course, is still in the news, and uh, while, while he's um, completely banned from speaking to the media... Um, it's all up to his family. We've heard from his mother, we've heard from his wife about how they would hate him to leave Arsenal. And it looks like Bob Van Persie, his dad, is, you know, pretty much towing the line. He said about his son, he'd never go to Manchester City as it's impossible he would want to play for another Premier League side that wasn't Arsenal. That's what he told El Mundo Deportivo. And he said, it would make no sense to go to Barcelona when they've already got Messi. Real Madrid would be a good option, but they are not so much a team as a collection of star names, so he wouldn't really fit in there either. So reading between the lines in this uh, article that appeared in the Sport Review, you'd have to say there is that possibility that Robin Van Persie could end end up at Real Madrid. And I think you can't blame him if he if he does elect to go, because we're just not really we're just not really doing enough um, in terms of trophy winning. But I'm not going to labour the point because I keep going on about this week in, week out and day in, day out. So I'll just lay off that one for now. You'll be glad to hear. But what I will say, and this is the most impossible story of all, it's on the Metro website, which is normally semi-reliable. The story they're running is this. Arsenal could buy... Uh, sorry, Arsenal could bid to buy back Sami and Nasri as Manchester City open to offers. Well, that's never going to happen in a million years, let's face it. No matter what the story is, obviously we sold him for good money, around about £25 million, uh, And now the player's been talking to L'Equipe and um, it looks like City will consider offers for, for the player who's looked good in the friendly games for, for France recently. I, I don't even know why they'd want to let him go, quite honestly, but... But this is a story that's being run. Wesley Schneider could be up for grabs. And then the speculation goes that if City buy Schneider, then what would they need Nasri for? Well, they've just won the league. Why? Then I think they're only going to tinker with their squad. I don't think they're going to make huge changes to it. But um, 
Well, there was huge changes. That, that, that was a very smooth segue, wasn't it? Not really. But there were um, some changes in, in the expected Germany lineup against, uh, against their opposition, which was Portugal, in Euro 2012. That was the second match of the ninth... Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting all technical here. The 9th of June on a Saturday night. And now it's Sunday morning. But you don't need to know that. But anyway, uh, who who starred? Well, certainly Mertesacker didn't didn't start because he didn't play. But Podolski did a did a really really good shift. He was more or less on the left wing. I was quite impressed with him. Um, solid solid performance from Podolski. Um, so we can't complain about that. He didn't score. Gomez scored a goal. It was a headed goal and. Uh, Thanks to Germany's victory against uh, Portugal, I, I won myself 90 pence with a one-pound stake. So that, uh, that was good news, but I'd had bad news earlier in the day, and I'll come to that in a moment. But yeah, looking at the game, what anything, anything relevant from an Arsenal perspective, apart from Podolski's solid performance? Um, well, and Mertesacker not playing. The one thing I would... I think it's of interest to... to Fans of all clubs, really, or big clubs, is Neuer's performance in goal was was top draw. It's best goalkeeping performance I've seen so far in the tournament. And uh, anyone looking for a goalkeeper, put your hand up. Where's my hand? It's there. Yes, I hope all the Arsenal board can see that hand as I scratch my neck as well, because you've got to throw a scratch in there somewhere. All this scratching's making me itch. But anyway, Neuer. He'd be a really good goalkeeper for any top club. So let's get him. Let's get him. But we know these these demands will fall on deaf ears, as they always do. Ronaldo had a reasonable game too, as you'd expect. He's supposedly one of the best or the best player in the world. I'm not going to dispute it because he could be. Uh, it, the, the, game, the game itself wasn't exciting like the opening two games. Not for me anyway. And the 1-0 result kind of confirms that, doesn't it? And, of course, it was 1-0 in the other game as well, and it was a little bit more interesting. Um, the most interesting thing about the other game in Group B, with, when Holland uh, suffered a shock defeat against Denmark, was Robin van Persie obviously taking on Nicholas Bentner. But um, Robin van Persie's performance was, um, well, not the best, let's say. And um, it was interesting what Clarence Seedorf said in the BBC studio. He said that uh, Robin van Persie's not relaxed enough to, to play his best for for Holland. And you'd have to say, just throw this in there, you'd have to say that if he moves on to another club, that's not going to Im necessarily improve his relaxation techniques when it comes to playing for his country. He'll be, he'll be, be under even more pressure because he'll have to learn uh, to play with new teammates, whereas at Arsenal, he's top dog. So I hope, you, hope you're listening, Robin, and hope you stay with, with Arsenal, even though, based on this performance... Um, I can't really see so many big offers coming in. But, of course, we all know Robin Van Persie is a class act and he's capable of much better. Uh, Bentner, reasonably solid performance from him playing up front uh, for, for Denmark. He was a bit of a handful, but not much more than that. Uh, again, it's not not really going to impress any potential suitors. But uh, Krohn Del uh, Delhi certainly did with his goal. It was very well taken for Denmark. Uh, they came on... They were under a lot of pressure during the match. I'm surprised they managed to dig out three points from somewhere. And, um, well, hats off to them, really. Uh, Afalaya, of course, he's been linked with the move to Arsenal. I'd love to see him in an Arsenal shirt after that performance. Uh, not amazing, but good. It was very good. And, and I think, I think he's, he's the kind of player I'd like to see, see at our club. Um, you know, he really, really looks a good bet. Uh, Ericsson, of course... Uh, the uh, number eight for Denmark has been heavily linked with Arsenal. But on that performance, he got substituted. I'd say, let's not get him based on that performance. But yeah, it's just one game. So let's not read too much into it. Um, other than that, it's, yeah, I mean, money-wise, I lost, I have to tell you this, I have to confess, I lost my stake on that game because I bet, I bet on uh, Holland to win. And I thought the result would be 2-1. It wasn't, obviously. And they lost 1-0. And... Uh, well, that, the 53, the 53 p winnings were never mine uh, because because of that shot result. They were a bit unlucky, hit the post and so on. But but anyway, I think that's enough uh, Euro 2012 talk for me uh, for me right now. And um, obviously, I've not got much else uh, in the way of Gunners news to bring to you. So so I'll call it 
I'll call it a night right now and um, hope you've enjoyed it. Any comments, you know where to leave them, right down there. And um, Is it down there? Well, you know, the comment section, that, that's where to go. Anyway, until the next time, up the Gooners and keep enjoying those Euros. <laughs>